Hi friends. Okay, so for our read aloud for today, we are going to be reading chapters three and four of Diamond Daniels. I genuinely hope you guys are enjoying the book so far. I'm having a lot of fun reading this, so I hope you guys are just having as much fun as I am listening to it. It's a really good story, so let's get to it. Chapters three and four. Elena, thank you so much for doing this today with being the read aloud clicker. You are awesome. Shout outs to the graphics in these chapters. I don't know if you guys noticed in chapters one and two, but there were pictures inside of the numbers. Look at this for chapter three. I'm just like, I never thought of authors doing that with their stories. It just goes to show how much creativity the illustrations can have sometimes inside of books. It's really cool. So thank you, author. Here comes Rude Boy. On Monday, Diamond tried to slip out of the house without a jacket. It was the end of September and still warmish. She had on a red t-shirt, jeans, and a blue vest with rows of red, white, and blue buttons sewn on the pockets. She called it her independence vest, and she didn't want to cover it up with a silly jacket. She'd sewn those buttons on with her own hands, and she wanted everybody to see them. Bye, Mom, said Diamond, almost up the door. Jacket, said Mrs. Daniel. Diamond rolled her eyes and went back to her closet. Mothers, thought Diamond. There was no point in complaining. It's not like she was going to be late for school. Since school started, she'd been leaving early each morning. She didn't have any special friend to walk to school with, and she didn't want to be reminded by seeing groups of other kids walking together. She felt left out enough as it was. Once she got to her homeroom, Diamond read over her homework while she waited for class to start. She looked up when the bell rang, just in time to see Free stomp into the room. Oh, brother, thought Diamond, here comes rude boy. She decided to ignore him, which was easy enough to do in class because he was quiet as a mouse. He never raised his hand. He never asked any questions. And when the teacher called on him to read, he slouched in his seat and made up some excuse not to. Diamond shook her head. I know that boy can read, thought Diamond. Just last week I caught him reading a book in the schoolyard after lunch. Nobody reads in the schoolyard unless they just plain like to read. So why is he making out like he doesn't? Diamond shook her head again. And why do I even care? Forget him. Diamond turned her attention back to Mrs. Cordell. Outside of homeroom, Free was harder to ignore. He stomped everywhere, growled at anyone who spoke to him, and kept bumping into kids because he didn't look where he was going. Two days in school, and he had almost everybody scared of him already. And he didn't even have to try hard. He was the tallest kid in the third grade, almost as tall as a sixth grader. When you're that big, all you have to do to scare somebody is show up and say boo. Free never said boo, but he looked mad all the time and that was enough to scare most of the kids. Diamond would have, wouldn't have cared except Free was being mean to kids who were too little to speak up for themselves. Diamond wanted to do something about it, but she couldn't, she didn't know what. Maybe Mrs. Cordell can help, thought Diamond. One afternoon, she hung around after the last bell so she could talk to her teacher in private. Mrs. Cordell, said Diamond. Yes, dear. What's the matter with the new boy? With Free? What do you mean, sweetie? Mrs. Cordell called everybody sweetie. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> How come he's mad all the time? I don't know, Diamond. Why don't you ask him? Diamond practically choked at the very thought. Never mind, muttered Diamond. I like Mrs. Cordell and all, thought Diamond, but that's crazy. No way am I asking rude boy anything. Diamond knew there was something wrong with him, though, and she figured one of these days she'd find out what. That day came sooner than she expected.
chapter four. Again, shout outs to these pictures. It's great. Chicken Nugget Tuesday. On Tuesday, it was Chicken Nugget Day to be exact. Diamond was sitting with the three T's when Free stomped into the lunchroom, fist clenched, not looking where he was going again. He bumped, to, he bumped into Jordan, this tiny third grader, and mumbled, out of my way, squirt. Poor Jordan shook so hard, he dropped his tray. Free just kept going, got his own lunch, and slammed the tray down on a nearby table. That's it, thought Diamond. I'm tired of seeing that boy scared the living daylights out of everybody in sight. Time somebody stood up to him. Diamond walked straight up to Free and said, What is your problem? Free looked up from his plate, startled. Who says I got a problem? You have got to be kidding, said Diamond, with one hand on her hip. See that little kid over there with her chin? She pointed to Jordan, who was still on his hands and knees, chasing his spilled chicken nuggets after dropping his tray. You did that, said Diamond. Free, suddenly looking sheepish, mumbled, sorry. <clears throat> said Diamond, you should be. Now tell him. Free thought she was kidding, but Diamond glared at him, hand still on her hip. He could tell she wasn't going to go away anytime soon. Sorry, kid, Free yelled loud enough for Jordan to hear. Only then did Diamond return to her own table. Diamond kept her eye on Free after that. Whenever she caught him growling at someone, she scowled at him. If she heard him yell at little kids, she'd step in front of them, cross her bony arms, and stare free and stare free down until he said he was sorry. After a few days of this, free did his best to stay out of everybody's way, especially diamonds. For some reason, he couldn't quite figure out. He didn't want her mad at him. Later that week, Diamond's mother sent her across the avenue for some Chinese takeout. On the way back, Diamond found Free sitting alone on the stoop of the building on her corner. She had heard he lived nearby, but this was the first time she'd seen him. Hey, she said as she passed. As always, Free just grunted. <clears throat> Diamond shook her head. Now, if you were smart, said Diamond, you could have said, Hey is for horses, if you were smart. What's so smart about that, he shot back. Diamond turned around and walked back to his stoop. There was something bugging this kid, and Diamond was going to find out what. Nobody could be that mean all the time for no reason. Could he? Friends, I genuinely hope we enjoyed this read aloud for today. It was definitely something eye-opening about the characters. I wonder what it is that we're thinking about Free and Diamond right now, especially this standoff that they had at lunch. That was super interesting. But I will literally see you guys in a few minutes. Later, friends.